Yes, it's fine. <clears throat> Let's get started. So I've uh, added this slide again. Um, so I will present standard languages uh, from a Fortran point of view, and Matt Stack will present uh, standard languages from C++. And we're going to try to divide it up into 15 minutes each, I think. And I don't know, Helen, we can take questions in between or at the end. It doesn't really matter. Uh, maybe do it afterwards. And okay. depending on the time, we could also uh, defer question to the Slack okay. chat. So some of this will be review. Uh, Jeff went over some of these things. Um, so for this training, we decided to start from the high level and, and which is the leftmost column here and work to the right. Uh, sometimes I think of things in the other order. I start from a CUDA point of view and work my way left. I think part of that is that's my job is to, part of my job is to find things in CUDA, new features and things that we can expose at a higher and higher level. Uh, but either way, you'll get exposed in the next two days to, to all three of these columns and, and the libraries underneath as well. <clears throat> so uh, for this section, we're just going to talk about uh, standard languages in Fortran. So uh, do concurrent is standard Fortran. So this uh, construct was introduced in Fortran 2008. So the, there is a little bit of uh, controversy about this. Uh, the standard does not quite specify do concurrent in the same way that we are using it. So we assume the programmer guarantees there are no dependencies between iterations. Uh, so that we can run it on parallel on either a GPU or a CPU. Uh, everyone is aware what we're doing. We have people on the Fortran Standards Committee, and it's mainly just like a language thing in the, in the language spec. But uh, it's intended. The intent of do concurrent is to say this is a parallel loop. The iterations of this loop can run in any order and they can run on any type of parallel hardware. So uh, the do concurrent is a lot like a, just a standard Fortran do loop. Uh, it's got a concurrent header and Jeff showed that, you know, it's, you know, J equals one to M and I equals one colon and M or something like that. Uh, so it's a little bit of a different format than a, the old Fortran do loop. And they have some uh, locality specif specifications. So you can de declare uh, variables used within the body as local, local initialized, shared, or default. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of those. And the just like C++, the option that enables GPU offload in our compiler is dash standard par. This is one of the features, as Jeff mentioned, that dash standard par tries to make as much of the data in your uh, program as possible to be managed data, CUDA managed data. And what CUDA managed data is, is uh, data that the driver and OS is responsible for paging back and forth between the GPU and CPU, similar to how virtual memory works on a CPU. Uh, in this way, the programmer does not have to worry about, you know, discrete memories for CPU and GPU, and it just makes the, the life of the programmer much simpler. I guess I need to speed up here a little bit. So just some examples, uh, do concurrent in MiniWeather. So MiniWeather is an is a application out of, uh, act, I think it's actually out of Oak Ridge from uh, Matt Norman name. So uh, we have ported that code to uh, do concurrent. And so the upper left uh, here shows do concurrent uh, with some local uh, arrays, D3, Val, Stencil, and also some local variables. So within a do concurrent, you can have other do loops. Uh, 
Uh, you can do just normal uh, Fortran operations. And if you compile with mInfo, you'll see that we parallelize the loops across uh, threads and blocks. Uh, the uh, do concurrent loops, and then the other some of the other loops are run sequentially within that, which is turns out is a you know a, a pretty good schedule for this group. Uh, starting in 21.11, I believe Jeff mentioned this as well. Uh, we support the reduce clause in do concurrent. So on the top line on the left, you can see do concurrent uh, with reduce. And so the reduce is, you know, uh, some reduction on the variable's mass and PE. And uh, so this gives you a lot of, uh, you know, capabilities. Our compiler sometimes would find reductions automatically, uh, but it's good to have a, a specification that actually supports that. And it doesn't hurt to add them even if our compiler can find them automatically because other compilers may not be able to. So this is more you know, conformant code to the spec now. And our mInfo messages say that we will generate a reduction. So we have some current limitations. Uh, this is, you know, fairly new work, newer either than newer than our OpenMP compiler. So, you know, some of the GPU programming models we've been working on, we've been working on for over 10 years. This is fairly new. It's been around about a year. Uh, the Fortran uh, spec requires functions and subroutine calls in do concurrent to be pure. So uh, if you call certain things, uh, you may get messages that, oh, you're calling a, a subroutine that is not pure. And we may at some point change that in our compiler, but today that's. Also, another place where we are a little fuzzy, as according to the spec, is we follow the OpenACC and OpenMP defaults for scalars and arrays within the body of the new concurrent. So scalars, our first private or local by default, and arrays are shared by default. If you read the spec, the Fortran spec on do concurrent, I don't know that it says specifically that that's how you handle scalars and arrays. It's very hard to really understand what they are trying to say. So in fact, standard par currently enables OpenACC and it's built on top of OpenACC. That is maybe subject to change at some point, but we we take advantage of a lot of the same runtime in our compiler for do concurrent as for OpenACC and for OpenMP as well as we'll talk about tomorrow. <clears throat> uh, do concurrent lacks control over GPU scheduling. You know we found that useful over the years. So things like forcing a loop sequential inside of a region, offloading a serial kernel. And there's no control equivalent to OpenACC's gang worker vector, which we'll talk about tomorrow. And interoperability with CUDA. OK. Uh, so we like all of our models to interoperate. You know, we'd like do concurrent to work uh, with OpenACC and OpenMP. And we would like to be able to uh, interoperate with CUDA as well, CUDA Fortran in this case. So uh, we still need to mark some of our, you know, standard device functions as pure. So there are certain things that are just kind of part of CUDA that you can't call in a uh, do concurrent. We do support atomics because that was important. So we made that change, but there are some other functions, you know, low level CUDA functions that would be nice, but we're not there yet. We don't have any control over the stream, which the offload region runs on. And we are not yet on our interoperable with CUDA Fortran device attributed data. We would like to be able to declare CUDA Fortran device data and, and use that in a do concurrent. Now, these are all extensions. Uh, so it would be non portable, but it would make uh, the programming model much more powerful uh, if you needed it. <clears throat> uh, this is a duplicate slide. I'm not going to get into this too much. Just I added. A, uh, title of a paper that came out at the end of last year from uh, 
person named Ron Kaplan, uh, who been using our compiler for many years, and he wrote a really nice paper called Can Fortran's Do Concurrent Replace Directives for Accelerated Computing? If you just kind of Google that, you'll find his paper. And, and he's ported a, an entire application uh, to using Do Concurrent. And one thing he found and said in the paper is, I would really like to have Do Concurrent reductions. So, uh, so we've addressed the, the main uh, issue that he ran into. I'm not going to get into this slide too much. This was presented at the last GTC. There are people working with Do Concurrent. Uh, some kernels out of NWCAM have been moved to Do Concurrent, and they found the performance was, you know, basically on par with OpenMP or OpenACC on the GPU. And a, a group from Games uh, used Do Concurrent to uh, port a portion of, of the games code. It was a pretty simple port. It was a, a part of the code that had just a single large one-dimensional do loop and they used do concurrent and it worked. It was great. They were happy. <clears throat> uh, a little bit about other libraries and uh, ways that you can use uh, standard Fortran. Uh, Jeff mentioned this Matmol. So, uh, one thing that I do as part of my job is to create Fortran interfaces to uh, CUDA libraries. And while I was writing the interfaces for QTensor, it occurred to me that QTensor solves a lot of uh, or solves a lot of the Fortran array intrinsic uh, problems for Matmol, reshape, and spread. And so we just added some capability if you use the QTensor EX module uh, to recognize cases that QTensor can run in a single kernel like this Matmol and just offload that. And uh, you will never be able to you know, write handwritten code that performs as well as the QTensor matrix multiply uh, in the library. So. So if you can take advantage of that, this is standard Fortran, uh, you'll get really good uh, speed ups. Uh, you've seen this slide before. The blog on the bottom is, is a article I wrote on bringing tensor cores to standard Fortran. These are just representative of the types of operations that we can recognize and make QTensor calls under the hood. Uh, one quickly here, one uh, project that we've done sort of in collaboration with NERSC is a library called NVLA Math. And using some of the same uh, techniques that we've used in other areas, uh, what we wanted to do was to write our own wrappers around some of the Q solver uh, functionality. So uh, NERSC identified 30 or 40 important LA pack calls for them. Of course, dgetRF is usually the most important. It does LU factorization. So the code on the far left is what you would do on a CPU and how you would link, you know, the LA pack in the BLAS library. You get about 500 gigaflops on a CPU using our open BLAS. Um, if you call QSolver directly, you know, you have to go through a, a little bit of a, a, a set of steps. You get the handle, you figure out what uh, workspace sizes are needed by the Q solver. You allocate that workspace, you call a, you know, a Q solver version of dgetRF, then you deallocate the work. Uh, if you compile that, you get about 3.3 teraflops on a V100. And uh, then GPU with NVLA math. So if you compile uh, with the option CUDA lib equals NVLA math, uh, we will pull in secretly kind of a, a module that redefines the interfaces to dgetRF and do the wrapper work for you. So you don't need to make any of these changes in the center to your legacy Fortran applications. 
and we will, uh, you know, the time is basically the same. There's, we're not saying that this is faster. It, it does basically the same work, but just hides that for you. So some possible future work, uh, you know, we'll probably look at ad adding some non-standard or NVIDIA specific capabilities to do concurrent, some of the things I mentioned. Uh, we'd like to do some more F90 intrinsic function support, similar to what we have for MATMOL, reshape, spread, uh, pack and merge would be very nice. Um, well, you know, once, uh, Pearl matter comes up and we get some feedback from NERSC users. We may add some more supported routines to NVLA math. Uh, we have these new multi GPU libraries. Maybe they can be wrapped, you know, under scaly pack interfaces, similar to what we did with LA pack. And of course, there's always new hardware and software features that come along.